Hi there, this is James with a tutorial on creating surgical or doctor preference cards using ICET Manager. And today we're going to go ahead and create a preference card for Dr. Jacobs, and it's going to be a lipoma removal preference card. So let's first talk about some of the advantages of using ICET for preference cards. First thing is, staff can log on to ICET from any internet connected computer, and so you don't have to deal with lost or misplaced preference card books. And another advantage to using ISIP over a program like Word or Excel is that your preference card database or data manager can be accessed and updated by logging on to ISIP from any computer. When preference cards are created using Word or Excel, the files are often on a computer outside of the operating room. And that makes it really difficult to change a card when requested by a doctor during surgery. So by making it easy for staff to access preference cards and make changes as needed, you always have an up-to-date card, which saves time, money, and promotes patient safety. So let's go ahead and get started by logging on to ICIP Manager. So when you log on, the first screen that comes up is your Instruments tab. And that basically just shows you a list of instruments that you have in your operating room. And we're not really going to be dealing with that today. We're going to be focusing on creating a preference card. And there are a few things that you need to know and have input into ICIP before you can actually create that card. And so the first thing is you need to know your surgeon's name, the kind of procedure that you're doing, what instrument set you're going to use, and then the pick items that you need to be placed on the card. So the items that come from the SPD department as well as the operating room. So the first thing we'll do is check and make sure that Dr. Jacobs is in our system. We do that by clicking on the Surgeons tab. And indeed, we do have Dr. Jacobs down here. Uh, if we didn't, we would just add Surgeon. And we'd be able to add the Surgeon's name, their gloves, as well as a uh, pager number and office number. And the advantage to doing it this way, instead of just putting it on the preference card, is that if that information changes, you know, down the road when they have a whole number of preference cards in the system, you only have to change the information one place. They change their glove size and it'll be reflected on all their cards. So, but since we have Dr. Jacobs in the system, we're all set. And next we'll go to the procedures tab and our lipoma removal is already there. But if it wasn't, we could add it by selecting the add procedure. Next, we'll check and make sure that the instrument set we want to use is here. And indeed it is. We're going to use a minor set. And so lastly, we'll go to um, our pick items screen. And so we have two sets of pick items. One is our SPD department pick items. And then the other one are the OR pick items. So things like suture that usually live in the operating room and are picked by the OR staff. And when we actually create the preference card now, this is a little trick that'll help things out. Um, you wanna come over to Manage SPD Pick Items and go ahead and right click on that tab and say, Open in New Tab. And then do the same thing under Manage OR Pick Items and say, Open in New Tab. So that's going to leave us with three screens open. We're going to have our preference card screen open. We're going to have our SPD item screen open. And we're going to have our OR item screen open. So come back to our preference card. And this is where we're actually going to start creating the preference card. So we need to click on Add Preference Card. And the first thing is our procedure name. And we click on the drop down. Select lipoma removal. We'll select Dr. Jacobs. And next we need to select our instrument set. And all you need to do is type in the first couple letters of any of these, and it automatically queries it from your database. So by typing M, it brings up my minor general set. And I'll go ahead and click that. If we were going to use more sets, we could do so by adding more. Our equipment screen. We'll just add in what we need here. So we'll say we're going to use a Foby machine and suction and a bear hugger. 
just to keep our patient warm. Next, we need to pick our SPD items. And if you have any question about SPD items, remember we have that tab open and you can just refer to your SPD items. So before an SPD item can get added to a card, you have to make sure that it's in the SPD department. And for our purposes, we're gonna um, have our SPD department pick our chloric prep for us, our electrocautery pencil, our procedure pack, a little normal saline and suction tubing. And since we're gonna pick those additional items, I'm gonna go ahead and just add them right here. So the first thing is our chloroprep. Type in my first couple letters and it prompts us. And we want one of those. Our minor procedure pack. Again, we just need one. Our irrigation. and our electrocautery pencil and our suction tubing. Now, my suction tubing isn't coming up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that we actually have that in the system. And when I look at the manage SPD items, I see that there's not a suction tubing there. So we need to go ahead and add that to the database. So we come up here to this tab and say add SPD pick item. Suction tubing. We'll give it a catalog number, a location in the SPD department to make sure that it's easy for staff to find, and the PAR number. Now the PAR number is the number that you have inside the department. And you need to make sure that this is a large enough number um, uh, that it'll be reflected and you can add it to your preference card. So you can't say pick 10 items from my preference card when you only have a par number of one. We'll add our suction tubing and now it's in our database. And when we come back to our preference card and we try and query it, there we go. Our suction tubing is indeed there now. So once we're happy with our SPD items and we see that we have everything, if we want to, we can change the order. So our procedure pack is second, but I wanna go ahead and bring that up to the first position. And we can do that by just clicking and dragging it. Next for our OR items, um, we just need to pick a couple sutures and maybe some Dermabond to close this. So we'll go ahead and we'll choose a 3O Vicryl FS1, one of those, and add two more fields, one for our 4O Monocryl and the other one for our Dermabond, make a nice, nice closure for our patient. Medications will now, so the medications, dressings, and the prep are just text fields. That doesn't query a database. You just need to just type in what you, know, what you want on the preference card. So, Marcane, half percent. Dressing is just the Dermabond. And prep and position is supine. and chloroprep. Scrub and circulator notes. We'll just remind our circulator of the bear hugger and any other notes you might want to add. And as soon as you're done with all those, click add. Oh, and it looks like I forgot to enter our quantity. So before it'll let us save it, I have to go back and enter the quantity for that Dermabond and Monocryl. Come back down here again, click add. And as soon as it's saved it, we see this little green bar saying preference card added successfully. And Dr. Jacobs here has his lipoma removal card. And if we wanna view that card, 
we just click on it, lipoma removal, Dr. Jacobs, it gives his glove size and his phone number, as well as all of our notes and our pick items here, along with their catalog number and their location and the quantity that need to be picked. Now, if you wanted to print out this card, you can export it as a PDF file to print. So you could either print it, or if you needed to email it somewhere, you could save it as a PDF and email it, making things really convenient. And that's it. We've now created our first preference card with ISIP Manager. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you have any other questions, um, there's an ISIP Manager user's guide that you can just download from their site that's really convenient for learning the, um, the other functions of ISIP. Take care and we'll see you again soon.